Um, well, I sure appreciate everybody getting up and coming in. Uh, Buzz is right. Uh, we've already introduced the, the 19 uh, model year. Um, but it's been a really busy year, and uh, Arlen and I are going to go through uh, a bunch of things that we've been through and stuff you might uh, find interesting. And then uh, we're scheduled for two hours. Uh, we certainly won't talk for two hours, but uh, we'll be able to answer any questions you have uh, at the end. So we always like this interaction. Uh, we love talking to you guys. A lot of our best ideas come from customers, so that's why we come here. And we're super interested in everything you have to say about uh, either the car you own or the car you'd like to own someday. Uh, or, you know, the whole team is here. You see all the people uh, that come down from Michigan and hear from the, the plant as well. Um, basically, just to hear uh, what you have to say. So, uh, like I said, we've had a really exciting year and uh, lots going on. So, uh, I'm going to let Harlan go ahead and uh, start uh, with a little retrospective and, and get us kicked off. So, thanks again for coming. things to, to start off with. Hey, did you know that the Corvette is the most loved car in America? <laughs> well, that's why they do surveys, I guess. People know that automatically, but here's proof. Actually, somebody proved it. Strategic Vision, they do the survey, and Corvette's the most loved car in America. And also, when a car driver is 10 most loved cars, we'll take that for it uh, once again. Uh, in the Car Driver Prestigious 10 Best Award. And how many people were here for the racing banquet last night? Oh, good. So I was, I was uh, honored to be, for, for me to be a part of it. And as you know, we're back-to-back -back manufacturers, driver, and team champs. And I uh, got off to uh, the start this year. We got finally got our first win at Long Beach. There we have in the defense trying the three-peat for, uh, for the championship this year. And the interesting thing, as you know, on the racing side, we compete with a lot of the same cars we compete with in the showroom. And the showroom, once again, we're also champions with over 40% of what we call the luxury sports car segment that Corvette owns. And that's thanks to all of you and all your friends buying Corvettes. And they're just really uh, doing even, even better in the showroom than on the racetrack, believe it or not, in, in beating the competition. Uh, one of the things uh, I'd like to go over, a lot of people like to see the data, one of the things is um, the carbon edition we did for 2018 that we showed here last year. Uh, we did all the 650 that, that, we, that we said we were going to do, and people stamped them up. It was it's a really special car, and it was a very successful uh, special edition uh, for 65 years of Corvette and all the carbon components, which uh, we celebrated. Now, um, here's how we're doing so far for 2019 model year. Already got some returns, you know, the first 7,000 cars ordered for 2019. And interesting, the Grand Sport, I talked about this a little bit yesterday, 30% Grand Sport's now past Stingray is the most popular uh, Corvette model. I uh, the different uh, models, you know, the Stingray, the 1LT is, is becoming popular, and this is uh, uh, really good for us as people, you know, we can get into a Corvette for not a lot of money. And, and, and what a great car, and we upgraded the wheels. There's a lot of wheel options on the Stingray uh, with the 19s and 20s. Uh, the Grand Sport, the 2 LT is the most popular. Uh, historically, the Z06, the 3 LT is the most popular. It's getting a little bit more 2 as the ZR1 comes out. And of course, the ZR1, um, you have just the two packages, and of course, the, uh, the Highline package is very popular. And just a few highlights. We have all this data on the different models. Um, one thing is the uh, HP uh, paddle shift continues to keep going up around over 80%. The uh, wheels, again, we have all these wheel options available for the Stingray. The one that Doug Vegan was talking about, this new Stingray uh, that he just bought recently, oddly enough, the, one, the wheels that he got are the silver ones in the corner, and it didn't even show up. To, so he's a pretty rare guy. You know, we've got one that didn't even get to a full percent. But uh, if you want to be like Fee Han, you can use people buy those wheels, so we want the Fee Han wheels. <laughs> On the, uh, the Grand Sport, again, the, uh, the Heritage Package with the Stripes continues to be uh, pretty popular as well. Red brakes, black wheels are the most popular wheel color. <laughs> the Z06, um, it's 
06 continues to do well. A lot of people are saying, well, see the ZR1, got to bring the Z06. Actually, uh, we saw this last time. A lot of people come in to see the ZR1, and then they decide, you know what, I'm going to get a Z06 today and not have to wait, and it's a great car. So it actually helps the Z06 a little bit. Still doing uh, very well with the Z06 competition seats. So always do well for Z06. And then we can have some early ZR1. Uh, so, uh, 69% are getting the ZTK package with the high lane and, uh, and uh, more aggressive chassis. We'll, get, we'll talk about that a little bit more. The other thing, incredibly, the ZLC, that's our, like the car we have here, right here, the Sebring Orange design package. We'll talk about the details of that in a few minutes. 37% uh, of the uh, zero ones, people are checking the box for that package. And so far, the carbon flash wheels are the most uh, popular. And again, uh, close to 80% um, paddle shift, wow. eight speed. And here's the colors. Everybody's really excited about colors. Uh, Arctic white. Uh, every year, the actually every year since 2013 has been the most popular Corvette color. And black always does well for it. Red, gray is doing well. And then look at the orange. 12% uh, good place for for orange, the sea green orange. And we talked about a little bit. You know, how we come to the, the bash and the Corvette event, and you guys kept saying, we want a bright orange. This gentleman with the orange shirt. <laughs> he bugged me for a while. So we finally got the bright orange. And he was right. Look how great it's doing. So let's get into uh, some new stuff for 2019. And for, you know, obviously, zero one is what we saying. There's a couple other little changes, small but significant things. Uh, like we said, we actually, as Buzz said, we actually have been building 2019 cars since January 29th. Zero One started in March. Um, we brought back the, the engine build program for Z01 and Z06. So if you want to uh, build your own engine, it's a great, it's a great like fantasy camp type activity. It's available. And the other thing, uh, 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 not insignificant, is to switch to over to Zero W40 oil. And this is a, uh, a great move because um, now you, don't, you can use that same oil for both street and track use. You don't have to do the, the oil change if you've got to go to the track uh, on all the cars. It's good for both usages. It's also backwards compatible to 2014 Corvettes. And also forward, if you don't have a 040, you're not going to the track, you can still use the 530 as well, so you really go away. But it's a great uh, achievement from uh, our friends at Mobile One to upgrade the uh, oil to the uh, dual purpose. So that's exciting. And then some uh, accessory news, performance. A lot of people are asking for performance upgrades. We came up with this new, it's available now. You can order it. Uh, um, as a dealer install option with your car or get it as an accessory. It's the new performance intake. First of all, it looks pretty cool. You got the J, we have the J on the, uh, on the air intake and things like that. But the key, the key things about it, with a ZR1, it had 17 horsepower, makes it 772. And then the uh, Z06, it has 11 horsepower, and it makes it 661. So it actually has a good performance uh, benefit. It's 50 state legal. And it comes with the label, uh, so it's a deep uh, performance. It comes with the warranty also, so it's a nice upgrade, especially for Z06 and Z01. Okay, uh, this is also a thing. This is something we also heard from um, you guys come to us. We, we always come every year and give a list of all the the details and improvements we do year to year. And the first thing people say, well, I just got a car, my car's one year old. You know, what should these upgrades can I add to my car? And nine out of 10 times we say, well, we're sorry, but you know, it's not backwards compatible, electronics, whatever, you have to get a new car. But this one, um, this is really cool. The if you have magnetic light control, we're actually making the newer calibrations uh, available so you can upgrade. Anybody, anybody here done this? You guys, and, and the people I've talked to, everybody says it's a great upgrade. They notice it right away. And it's basically available on um, all the Corvettes with magnetic ride control. So the FEQ the Stingray, the Z51, the magnetic ride, the Grand Sport, the Z06s. 
Um, they're, they're available in upgrades, and there's two different kits. Some of them, you can either get the full one, or some, or we actually made one available that leaves the track mode alone. We usually did that in case uh, somebody, people like the track mode the way that it is, that you've done a modifications, they don't want to touch the track mode, you can get it that way too, or you can get the new track mode calibration as well. So it's something to look into if you want to upgrade your van ride. And another one we've done, we, we, we actually came out with these um, carbon flash rockers for the uh, 2017 Grand Sport Z06, and they're now available if you have Stingray. It's a nice add to uh, both aero and then the main thing to is uh, the use of stone chips and things like that. It's less expensive than getting the carbon fiber versions. So it's, that's available. So let's talk about the ZR1. Now, as you know, this isn't the first time we've done a Corvette ZR1. ZR1 has a great history and heritage for Corvette. And actually, the first ZR1 uh, is one that maybe a lot of people may not remember or know about. Uh, actually, it started as a lot of the Corvette games start as an RPO code you know, for, a, for a performance package. This was very um, heavy duty package for an LT1 engine, uh, 1970 to 72 Corvettes. All of those three years, only 53 were made. And uh, I had you know, some hardcore stuff, no air conditioning, power windows, power steering, no radio. So it's really a hardcore track package. And it cost $1,010.50. So I could learn something from the, the guys back then. They used to use the sense. Well, that's more money than I'm leaving on the table. So they had 50 cents to every option. So they were smart back then. Yeah, with 53 yeah. sold, you make a lot of money. Of course, the 1990 ZR1 um, really brought the Corvette into the full supercar status. Yep. You know, with the LT5 engine, came out 375 horsepower, went up to 405. Uh, in 1990, came out 58,995. It's a lot of money back then, but really competed with cars that were more expensive. Had pretty wide tires, just like any standards, from 15. And we made almost 7,000 of those over its um, basically six month a year run. Then Zero One returned in 2009 as the first supercharged Corvette and uh, 638 horsepower and the uh, first Corvette that cost over $100,000. And, uh, and there's a lot of Corvette firsts in this car, and a lot of the things that we did on this car have translated to the, the models across the range. You know, the carbon fiber components, carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber roof, the carbon ceramic brakes from Brembo, Michelin tires for the first, was the first production Corvette, the Michelin tires, we had the unique hood window. 1920s, first Corvette with 19-inch front, 20-inch rear. We thought that was so outrageous. Now that's our standard size wheels on the Stingray. But um, we are, and we headed off to the new 2019 Corvette Zero One. Tad, I'm hoping you can tell you more about that.
At least two amazing Corvette Sierra ones epitomize a strong alliance between the design and engineering. Our team's effort has created the finest Corvettes in our history.
feel total downshifts. Almost all of them just put the rev match on uh, now, so that is becoming uh, kind of pervasive. Everybody kind of expects it, and the performance of that system has gotten better than even pro drivers will use it because you cannot do better uh, than it. Uh, so the standard chassis, uh, as on the last uh, ZR1, we have a magnetic ride, uh, ELSD, which is uh, new for this generation, ceramic brakes, first time on a Corvette and C6, uh, again, the standard on the car here. And, um, you know, we have Brembo uh, come to many of our events to talk about the collaboration that we have between uh, General Motors, Corvette, and, and Brembo. And they're really happy uh, that they've partnered with us because we've actually pushed uh, their technology in a direction to make it more everyday useful. Uh, when the C6 ZR1 came out, ceramics were very exotic. Uh, they came only on really high-end cars or expensive options on high-end cars, and they were kind of track-oriented, and so all anybody cared about was track performance. Nobody cared about you know how easy it's to modulate when they're cold. You know whether they feel like a daily drive when they're cold. Uh, do they make noise? A lot of them were really noisy systems back then. Because we didn't care about that on the track, and we actually pushed Brembo with the technology in the direction to make it uh, everyday useful in addition to uh, the ability to perform really well on the track. The standard car, uh, obviously, have the Michelin tires. The tires are the same uh, sizes as on the. The um, standard car comes with the lower drag spoiler, so that's the low spoiler. That's actually no higher than the, the uh, Z06 uh, wicker uh, rear spoiler system. We wanted to have a uh, you know, hardcore track version, this reasonably, you know, the best aero we could, but because the aero aids have to be directly tied into the body structure, they can't be attached to the hatch like you see on a lot of cars. When you open the hatch, the spoiler goes up with it. There's so much load on that thing, it would actually press the hatch down into the body work, compress the seals, and it would actually change the attitude of the wing, which you cannot have uh, on the track if you make the car unstable. So we have to tie it directly into the structure, and that means the wing stays in place when you open the hatch of the deck lid uh, on the convertible. And so it's pretty hard if you check the cars out out here. It makes loading luggage or the removal of roof uh, makes it more difficult to load over that wing. So we want to make sure if somebody wanted all the horsepower chassis and everything, um, the ZR1, but still want to use it as an everyday car, um, we put the low wing in there to, to be a more all-around easy car to use. So that's the standard condition. And then Harlan mentioned the ZTK, which like 60% of people, uh, 69, almost 70% of the people are requesting. Um, it certainly makes the car visible from a long way away. Uh, that's the ZR1. Um, spoilers up nice and high. Uh, that's the best to see it on race cars. The spoilers are high up in the clean air. Uh, it's nice because it's so high you can't see it in the rear view mirror. Uh, you actually see under it, uh, which is a, a nice feature. So in that way, it's, it's actually better than the low wing car. Um, you get the cup tires. And uh, you get, uh, on the tier one I mentioned the brakes, uh, we put uh, hybrid racing pads uh, at all four corners, and then we put a uh, special version, even though it looks the same, it's a special version of the front rotors. Um, it actually bakes longer uh, in the oven at Brembo. Uh, these things take like a week to make a set of rotors, a uh, very special process, and it takes even longer uh, if you bake it, it actually puts more silicone in the rotor and that helps with heat resistance and uh, that makes the car more robust on the track. Uh, I mentioned the engine, a lot of uh, content changes in the engine. We wanted to make sure uh, it didn't only make a lot of horsepower, but it would do so uh, for the life of the car, either on the street or on the track. Um, we actually had to, uh, to work with Eaton, as we have before. This is one of their biggest uh, superchargers. Very challenging to package it uh, under the hood. We actually had to invent a new throttle body. We found it for the first time that a restriction, you know, it's basically a pump. You're going to uh, take air through the engine. And we found that even though we were using the biggest uh, throttle body General Motors and our suppliers had, it was still a bit of a restriction. So we had to tool up a new one uh, from scratch. Uh, <coughs> it's almost 100 millimeters, 95 millimeters in diameter. It's almost four inches around how big this uh, throttle is. Uh, had to do new control systems, uh, redo the lube uh, and vent, that's for uh, oil management, make sure the car lubes itself well uh, on the track. And 
And then um, we had to do a um, special version of the hood, which you've probably seen out here, to actually surround the engine because it comes up right through the hood. And all the engines will be rebuilt right over here uh, in the plant in the performance build center. So all these will be hand built. Here's a little more detail uh, on the supercharger. You can see it's actually uh, three inches, 73 millimeters, is three inches taller than the LT4. Uh, also quite a bit taller than the LS9 that we had in the sixth generation car. The reason why height is good is that you can, first of all, the blower itself is bigger, so that takes up more room. But you also have the heat exchangers for the inner cooler. As you go up, you can make those bigger, which means you're taking more heat out of the intake charge. Cooler air into the cylinder means more power. And then it also improves the flow path. The higher it is, the longer the flow has to get through the, the uh, heat exchangers, mixed properly, and it goes through the ports. If that whole system is set up higher, you can get a more even distribution uh, into all cylinders, which really helps us out. <coughs> the, uh, when you look at the hood, you know, that's one of the big challenges we had, is how do you do this giant engine in a car with a very low seating position and a very low roof. You don't want the engine to obscure all your view forward. So we wanted to keep it as low as possible. You remember on the C6, ZR1, we pushed the engine all the way up to the underside of the hood. We eliminated the inner panel on the hood. We eliminated the hood blanket. And we just put that little uh, polycarbonate window in uh, so that you could see the engine through there. Um, we spent a fortune dressing up the engine, you know, we actually used the cast aluminum uh, intercooler cover, and then we uh, polished it, and we painted it, and we clear coated it to make it look as good as we could, and a lot of people thought it was fake. A lot of people actually thought it was a piece of plastic because it looked so perfect. Um, this time around, we said, well, okay, that wasn't the most successful. We actually need more room, more vertical room. So we said, well, why don't we take the engine right up through the hood? Um, Callaway does that, and you can see the engine, but we didn't want it to have just this sort of crude machinery coming up through the engine, or through the hood, so we said, why don't we just do the whole intercooler cover in carbon, and then have the carbon hood, which surrounds it, also be carbon to create a racing stripe uh, look with the ability to have the engine uh, coming right up through. So a lot of people are really surprised when they look at the car with the hood closed. It looks like what we call our B92 package, which is exposed carbon racing stripe on the hood. But when you open the hood, you can see it. No, the hood is just a halo around the engine. And uh, this engine cover stays put with the uh, engine, and the rest of the hood goes up. So it's kind of a trick a solution. It looks really good, and it works really well in terms of getting uh, the proper packaging in. So the bottom line is you know, performance, horsepower, torque. I mentioned the numbers. So here's a, a walk-up chart, starting with the LT1. So uh, 460 horsepower, 465 foot-pounds of torque. Certainly no slouch. Uh, it's a hell of an engine, and uh, everybody has one. is very happy with it. Then we, we brought out the LT4, a Z06 big step up, uh, supercharged engine. You can see 650 foot-pounds of torque, 650 horsepower. So very, very uh, much bigger than the LT1. In fact, surpassing what we've done on the LS9 in the last generation. And then here's the uh, LT5. And what's important here is to see that the torque curve is everywhere higher. Uh, a lot of times when you go up in power, you end up with a very peaky engine. You get uh, the torque curve staying high, and just right at the end, which pushes the horsepower curve up. And so that's the only place you'll feel it is when you wind it out. That's not the case uh, with this engine. It has a lot more torque across the band. And it doesn't look like a lot here, but if you look at this scale, it actually starts at zero, and each of these increments is 200 foot-pounds, which is an enormous scale. So even though this doesn't look very big, you know, that is like 100 foot-pounds uh, right there, that difference. And that's a difference you can really feel. And uh, this engine is so awesome because every gear feels really powerful. There are no bad gears that you pick one. You put it in the throttle and you go. It's just amazing uh, the amount of torque you have on hand. Just for uh, interest, we also put the what Harlan mentioned. Here's the, the predecessor, LT5. 
and you can see how far we've come. So the king of the hill uh, back in the 90s, uh, ZR1, that's way down here, way below even our standard offering today at 375 horsepower. So you can see how technology has really moved and uh, we're all the beneficiaries of that. The big uh, important thing on this car was to manage the cooling, make sure that it was uh, cooling well at all temperatures on the track. So that's a big reason the car looks the way it does. The, uh, we crammed as much cooling content in, in this car as we could. So it has everything from the Z06 plus a bunch of outboard cooling content. So additional inner cooler, each one of these outboard modules that see, you see here has two coolers in it. It has uh, what we call a low temperature, that's actually the inner cooler, uh, cooler, and then additional radiator, so engine cooling, cooling. So you actually have three across for both the inner cooler and the radiator. Uh, so we spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel making sure that the, the biggest heat exchangers we could package in the car got really good airflow, and so that the car cools uh, up to 100 degrees now full tank of fuel, pro driver, 